screen, you can see Dirk Van Rossum. He will be with us at the TWI and Cotta Summit coming up in very, very soon, actually, just like a few short weeks. Um, that is April 8th through the 10th. April 8th will be workshop days, and then the 9th and the 10th are the TWI and Cotta Summit days. I believe that is all from me for now. So, Dirk, it's all on you. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Skylar. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dirk Van Rossum. I'm director for the Center of Excellence at Helena Industries. Um, I'd like to talk with you this afternoon about uh, our journey in the past year or so. So considering that it's been over a year, there's a lot of content to cover in a very, very short time in this webinar. So I'll do my best to kind of hit the highlights. Um, if there are questions, we can pause along the way. Uh, and then we'll also leave time at the end, um, hopefully for some, some questions as well. All right, so let's talk about this. Uh, our journey, as you can see here, um, we've been uh, deploying CARA in our organization and it's been a really exciting and interesting journey. So happy to share that with you. Um, our agenda just for our conversation today, oops, let me just get to the right slide. Uh, very briefly is what we'll talk about is I'll introduce our company. Uh, so you know what we do and where we come from. Um, and then why talk about Kata, right? Why, why is this a subject important and where does it fit into this whole lean transformation of thinking continuous improvement transformation framework? And then what we did and how we are deploying a, a Toyota Kata in our organization and then what we've learned and accomplished thus far. And not necessarily exactly in that order. I've kind of mixed things up a little bit to keep it interesting, but, the, but those are the main topics we'll hit this afternoon. All right, so let's get started. Helena Industries, um, we're a manufacturer and we also do some warehousing distribution, but primarily I'm a manufacturer of crop protection chemicals. Um, we are part of Helena Agricultural Enterprises, but a separately operated company uh, on the manufacturing side of things. Um, and in addition to Helena, we have approximately 30 other external customers that we do toll chemical manufacturing for. All right, so we have about uh, 500 employees, four plants. Here are our core values, responsive, have a good attitude, be proactive, have integrity, um, be dependable and always act safely. And our brand that we uh, present is a trusted resource to all our stakeholders. And recently in recent years, the leadership team came up with, well, how are we gonna do that? And that's through manufacturing and service excellence. So that's all very good and well, that's us. Um, so as you can see here, just a snapshot of what our um, factories typically look like on the inside. Uh, we do two, two things on a manufacturing process. One is formulation where we uh, mill the uh, dry components. We mix it in and blend it in then in, in mixing vessels and blending vessels. We call that formulation uh, where we put the chemical compounds together. And then we have some sort of packaging. It either goes into large totes in drums or in bulk tankers, and then also into a gallon, two and a half gallon and four gallon jugs, as you can see in this uh, picture on the right-hand side uh, of a packing line. Um, the automation of our packing line varies. This is one of our most automated lines. We also have lines that are very manual and also others that are somewhere in between. Um, so a whole spectrum of different kinds of activities in the uh, blending and in the packaging field. So that's what we do. So moving forward, the question then, of course, becomes then, if we talk about excellence, what are we really talking about? And one of the things that I always um, try to rely on and have for the last 20 years or so is using scientific thinking at a strategic level. So when I joined the company, I started asking questions about where are we headed? What does it look like? Where should we be next year? What is our current situation? What do things look like now? Um, just to get the ball rolling in terms of thinking about improving and getting better at, uh, at what we do. Um, and you'll see that uh, theme repeat in the, in the rest of this talk this afternoon. Um, so with, with that said, when we going back to what we're striving to accomplish on one hand, this is just one perspective of it, is, well, we want to achieve some sort of continuous improvement culture as a challenge down the road, three years down the road at a strategic level, five years down the road or so. What is our current uh, condition with regards to that? Well, in the past, we may have had CI-led projects. I don't know what your situation looks like. That was the case for this organization. And right now, we have small pockets of CI with our CADA teams and some other projects that are on the go. 
what's our next target condition in a year or so to get to a more basic uh, continuous improvement uh, culture. Just the underlying pieces, pilots all working everywhere, et cetera, something like that, right? So that's the strategic uh, idea that we've uh, put forward. Um, so then the question becomes, well, how do we go about building that, right? So jumping right ahead, I'm, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of discussion on culture as such. Um, I'll reserve that for the talk at the Cardacom 10 uh, Summit next month. Right, so let's talk about that. Cultivating a, a culture of continuous improvement, our experiment. The question I'd like to pose to you is, how does an adult get good at new skills and associated thinking for a new lifestyle. What does that take? Imagine yourself, you want to take up a new sport. You want to get fit, you're not fit, you're a couch potato. Whatever that is, right? You want to take something new on, what's the effort involved and what does it take to, to get to that new lifestyle? Right? Some of you might have seen the backward bicycle video. I think that's an excellent example that kind of demonstrates that for adults to learn something new, and really get good at the skill and wire it into our brains can take six to eight months of daily repetitive practice. So that's where Toyota Kada comes in. So it's to de deliberately practice scientific thinking every day, and then through that form routines and habits. And then from neuroscience, we know that that then gets hardwired into our brains. So it starts establishing a mindset of scientific thinking in all that we do. And then we get the product of the people's scientific mindset. So all these people is working in the organization, interacting with each other, the scientific thinking culture starts taking shape from that. And then of course, to help sustain that, we also need to make sure that we put the necessary management systems around that. So CADA starts on this end, we start practicing so that we can move towards a culture. And then we build systems around it to ensure that it doesn't decay, right? So with that said, learning and growth through struggle, because we're taking on something new that's really hard. And that's kind of a theme in here as well, is something to be aware of as you go down this journey. On paper, it might seem straightforward and easy, but in reality, it takes a lot of effort. But the good news is there's a pathway to, to work your way through that that works really well. Some of you might wonder, well, what are we talking about? And what is Toyota Kata? Um, I'm not sure uh, you know how familiar all of you are with that, so I'd like to just pause on this over here and explain that briefly. So on the one hand, we have the learner who's got an improvement carta with four steps. The first step being understand the direction. The second step being grasp the current condition. Three, establish the next target condition. And then four, do some experiments towards the target condition to move away from the current condition. In between three and four, there are obstacles that we identify. Those are the things we do experiments on to dissolve those obstacles. At the same time, we have a coach. A coach is helping the learner to go through those three steps in the planning and the preparation stage of their story. And then during the experimentation to knock out all these obstacles, there's a very specific coaching card or routine that is deployed with the five questions. The learner is working on a challenge. That's the direction. The challenge helps set, set the direction and uses a storyboard that is set up like this. Challenge in the top right-hand corner. Then the target condition is described in terms of the target process uh, steps or uh, workflow and then the process characteristics and then the number of process and outcome metrics. And the current condition is depicted in a similar fashion with the, the work pattern, the, the characteristics and the relevant metrics on run charts. And then there's a section for recording those PDCA cycles and then a, a list of the obstacles, which we call the obstacle parking lot. So that is a, an attribute of the CADA process. And, and then with that as well, the, the five questions that the coach uses. So these routines that we have, have here and that we get from these cartas, these practice cartas, help build the underlying thinking and establish new practices in the organization. So that's carta in a nutshell. The key thing here is that we need to pay attention to at the root of this is really identifying the obstacles and doing experiments from which we can learn. 
whether the experiments are successful or if they fail. Um, and that's a really interesting topic to experiment with and experience during this uh, deployment with CADA. Um, the learning from the experiments is what really matters. Okay, so how we went about this is just high level thinking and then we'll get into the details is that we think about this improvement cara, these four steps um, at all levels in the organization. So with the process teams working on frontline type of problems in their working area, um, they'll be deploying that. But at the strategic level as well, and that's where it connects to ocean planning, we use the same questions. The only thing that's different is the time scale is perhaps longer and the scope is perhaps broader. And we'll detail that out a little bit more. So really what we're talking about here is that from the ocean planning and applying the uh, improvement Carter question there, we deal with the big rocks that we need to work through in the organization to make step changes in, in our performance, where we're headed towards our, our future. And then at the front line, it's more dealing, uh, deals more with the small rocks that the frontline teams need, need to, to work on to help move towards that challenge condition that the overall organization has in mind down the road. So it ties back to this same model. The level of detail just changes slightly. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at that in a little bit more detail and how we went about that. Um, so starting with our CADA movement, what we see here is um, in November, 2022, I introduced uh, ocean planning to our executive team um, just to get the ball rolling. And it was kind of framed on, again, these improvement Carter questions. And out of that effort came six strategy A3s that you can see on the page here. Um, one for continuous improvement culture building, one for safety, one for people engagement, one on revenue growth, one on information system technologies, because that's a big thing that we need to be working on in our organization, and another one on margin improvement. So kind of the, the cost aspect. Um, so when we look at those people A, uh, A3 and culture A3s together, what came out of that is we need to build this culture of continuous improvement. We need to create engagement for people. So those, those these things went hand in hand. So what can we then do to move in that direction, what move can we make? So what we did was we conducted an executive CARTA experiential where we got uh, Beth Carrington and, and uh, Brandon Brown to come and deliver a, a one-day workshop with us using playing cards to kind of demonstrate in a six-hour session or so how the whole CARTA process works. Uh, that was very interesting, was very enthusiastically received by the leaders. So this it was the uh, head office executives as well as all the plant managers that were participating in that. And from that, a decision was made then to um, create a um, first wave and have a kickoff at two of our largest sites <clears throat> and to have them pick two teams to get going. So there you can see a picture of the team, one of the teams uh, practicing during the kickoff week, where we again use a simulation, not the card game, but dominoes to kind of demonstrate the, the process before they then start working on their real boards um, in that actual kickoff week. So um, let's look at that a little bit more on what that looks like when we do this kind of deployment. So when, we, when you have this kickoff, obviously prior to that, there's some preparation work that needs to be done. You need to prepare the ground. You need to, might need to prepare the ground like we did of having a leadership experiential to kind of get the minds on board of whether this is a good idea and a good fit for the organization at this time. I think there's never a bad time to do this based on the experience that we've had. But here are some of the steps that are involved in rolling this out. So you need to form a shepherd group uh, for each of the sites where you're going to start. Um, they need to help then select topics and teams. Um, and they need to start collecting data for those teams because when those teams start, they really need to be able to do work um, and they need data for that, right? So to understand your current state, to really get rolling very quickly, that's really important. The other part that happens in the preparation phase is um, 
the the teams get guidance on writing their challenge. Now, obviously, the challenge needs to tie back to something that's important in their department department or important to the site's goals overall. So, some somewhat loosely tied to the ocean planning that I alluded to earlier. Especially in this first round, we kind of loosely connected it. It wasn't a tight knit connection. And then you hold a kickoff week. So you, you spend a week uh, training people and then getting their board started and getting their initial coaching cycle started, started. And then they roll, they roll forward and they start practicing and applying this and start meeting on a daily basis. And then we focus on specific topics during the ensuing months. So in month one, we kind of focus mainly on just getting it right knowing where the stuff on the board goes, getting the right kind of information on the board, making sure that they're able to do the coaching routines using the five questions, etc. And then, oh, by the way, <clears throat> of course, with Carter, there are three players um, in each team. There's the learner who owns the board, and there's the coach who coaches the learner to ensure that the learner is successful with what he's trying to, he or she is trying to do. And then there's the second coach who's responsible for the development of the coach and that the coach actually accompli accomplishes what needs to be accomplished. So <clears throat> with those three players, every month they'll rotate to uh, a new role. So they all get a turn to be a learner, a coach and a second coach. As that rolls on, <clears throat> the next month we focus on the quality of practice. So we start paying attention to the content and the details. And after that, we then in the following month after another rotation, the, the coaching skills development becomes a focus. So the second coach starts asking more deliberate questions of the first coach. All along, of course, these, these teams are, are meeting every day. They're starting to learn, they're starting to progress, and they're starting to actually get into improving their processes, which is very, very exciting to see. And they start getting results. And by this stage, confidence starts to build as well. They start getting used to the process. After that first three month period, <clears throat> it's then time to do quarterly a skill assessment, um, which uh, there's a template for. And then um, that those teams just continue. They can continue to rotate if they want, but normally they stay in a natural hierarchy of a crew leader, supervisor, and a manager in the area. Um, what does then also a good thing to do, which we did uh, as well, is after this time is we conducted a train the trainer workshop where we got our CI team and some other players in the shepherd groups trained on how to run a kickoff week. And then you're ready to do your next wave and start building more teams up. So that's kind of the process that we followed there. And you can see some examples of that. I'll pause quickly here. Are there any questions at this point in time? Dirk, we do have one question. Um, did you coach the executives through the A3s? Yes. Did they use Kata to create them as a team? Um, that first time around, we did not. We used the improvement Kata questions to fill out a, a reflection strategy A3. So we didn't use the Kata storyboard as such. We use the reflection A3. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Very good. So uh, moving right along. So what we noticed initially as well from these first teams was that we have an issue with getting process data easily for these team uh, participants to be able to access so they can rapidly track their performance and so on. You can see the example on the board over there um, from a West Helena facility. They've got some nice graphs over there, but it took some time for them to develop that. And then the other thing that uh, emerged very, very early on is one of these teams in this group um, was seeking an effective training method because they were focused on training <clears throat> to improve their process. And I'll talk about that a little bit more detail later on. So these things emerged. So in order to make this successful, they had to build a management system around it as well, right from the beginning. And that's what this looks like, just uh, to give you an idea. So you have... Four, we started with four process teams uh, across two sites. So each site would have their site-specific shepherd group. And then we had an executive shepherd group we eventually started as well to provide oversight over the, over the total um, to identify and um, work on obstacles that the local teams <clears throat> uh, couldn't deal with because they were beyond their grasp. And then we had our external master coach who kind of oversaw all of that. 
So here's just an example of the um, executive uh, shepherd group board. This is from last week. So we're still running that. So that's myself, uh, executive um, team uh, president, as well as our um, VP of finance and our controller are currently on that shepherd group. Um, you can't have a management system without metrics. So here's just a quick snapshot. I'm not going to dwell on this very much. Um, we can come back to this in questions if there are any. Um, we track um, the, the level of proficiency um, in the coaches and the learners, and we track various other metrics in terms of how the teams are progressing and how we are building this out in terms of adding more teams and building the capacity and the capability of CARA and the organization. <clears throat> so with that said, we conducted a train the trainer um, session in June last year, and then from there onwards, we did a second wave kickoff. Uh, that these um, trainers then participated in and developing. And we added um, a number of teams. So we started with four, so we added six teams overall. And three of those teams had a need for training immediately in their subject matter and the theme that they were working on. Um, so that was kind of a trigger for us to start looking at, well, how do we do that? This is an obstacle. Uh, how could we dissolve that obstacle? And that led to introducing TWI job instruction in, into uh, all the sites. We'd already done it earlier with one of the wave one teams uh, with great success. So that was our pilot. Um, so we expanded it here at this point in time in the middle of last year. Um, later on last year, we formalized our ocean planning um, to, the, uh, to the earlier question where we went into more detail, not just the executives only having strategy A3s. This time we cascaded it to the plants formally. We, we had catch ball meetings with them and the plants all came up with their strategy A3s as well. And they connected all their CARA teams back into one of as a, as a line item on their strategy A3s. Um, in their particular contexts. We also did some value stream mapping in the background. And recently out of the Hoshan planning, then um, we also identified the need to um, do job relations training under TWI uh, for people across the organization to support the CADA efforts and other just developmental needs. And then we also uh, just recently uh, completed some advanced co uh, CADA coaching dojos to help equip coaches to be better coaches. So that's uh, taken things to the next level and made things more exciting for the, all the coaches involved. And we're ready now for our wave three kickoff. With that, uh, what we discovered along the way was as you start doing this, things emerge as needs. So the shepherd groups self-explanatory, but the need for leader standard work. How does a manager who now needs to start paying attention to and coaching a CARA team clear his timetable and make sure that he actually attends these on a regular basis? So there was a place for leader standard work that was uh, necessary. Uh, the process data we talked about, a training management system sits in the background to support the TWI, JI. Uh, daily management systems, how do we connect to daily management systems, shift tier meetings, and then the visual management that goes with it. <clears throat> one, one or two of the teams have identified the need for changeover um, improvement. So SMED became a part of that got woven into what these guider teams were doing. So there's a lot of good consequences that come out of this. Some lessons. Change is awkward and takes more effort than you think. Hang in there. Um, you'll get through it. But it's hard sometimes and people struggle with it. So you need to be compassionate and supportive as coaches. Um, there's a shift in priorities. People's calendars need to be updated so they actually make time for this. In the beginning, there were arguments, oh, we don't have time for this. Well, we have 24 hours in a day or eight hours in a shift. It's not a matter of time. It's a matter of priority. So how do we need to prioritize so we can have time for this? And that's a new skill. So it requires practice. And it's just really awkward in the beginning for the participants. Some people have a hard time being coached, and that's just a reality. So that's also something you're going to have to work through. You can't over-communicate the change, right? So for the participants um, up front, why this is happening, why they've been selected, et cetera. And then for the rest of the organization that is not in the, in the pilot, that see all this happening and start wondering, well, what's going on? How can we become part of that? And that's the exciting thing, too. From our successes and from the excitement we've seen is people are asking, when is it my turn? When, when can I get on a CADA team? So that's really good to see. 
start small, the flywheel builds, and then uh, it's not it's not a road. So one of the risks we identified as well is people start getting to a routine that it became rote in their coaching cycles. And that's why one of the reasons we introduced the Kata Dojo is to go deeper with the coaching. So we really get to scientific thinking and asking the right questions and doing really robust experiments rather than just going through the motions. Uh, and the final thing I just want to point out is the, the other thing that happens is people think that when master coaching takes place or when uh, the steering group or shepherd group is there to, to second coach, that it's about their performance in front of the board and it's not. So you need to talk people through that and train people through that. Talking about TWI and JI, uh, just very quickly as an example, this is one of the first teams that came up with this need. They're training um, uh, two of the team members in a three-person team to be more proficient at more tasks so that the role player, the key player, the, the quarterback in that team of three people can do more of the value-added work. Um, so they uh, started using TWIJI uh, to overcome this and to achieve this, and they've been very successful with it. They had a really poor uh, retention rate of 57%. It's now at about 92%. So they're really doing well with what they're achieving there. They've written over 100 jibs and delivered those in training. And from this, this was kind of the spark to spread it to all four plants. Um, some wins and some struggles with that. Um, training of computer-related functions is now much easier. It's resource-heavy in the beginning, but you just need to see it through. And then you have the need for a, a management system to, to manage the jibs. I've got some material here on how we continue, uh, connect it into um, uh, Hoshian planning, just to lay it out. So you can see we had plant Hoshians. They came up with their A3s. Their Kata teams are connected into that, and we've identified future Kata teams. So here you can see Hoshian, Kata, and TWI starting to get integrated. So quick wins, massive reductions in process improvements in uh, lead times and batch times and process times, as you can see. Um, significant double-digit numbers, and also cultural changes, breaking down silos, creating a culture that it's okay to fail, and then identifying other things such as TWIJ, IJR, and SMED as solutions for obstacles that arise. Um, in closing, I want to thank our master coach, Brandon Brown. He's done a stellar job of the past year sticking uh, out with us to uh, hanging out with us to, and to teach us this methodology and also to our awesome continuous improvement team members, our shepherd groups and plant managers and our 30 Carter members. Without them, we wouldn't have had the success that we've had. Um, for more data and information, come to Carter content and I'll share some more of the details with you there. And that closes off my webinar for this afternoon we are thank open you for Dirk. questions uh yes actually we got um one it has two parts um did you have a daily tiered huddle if so how did this integrate into that okay so the great question thank you for that so in some areas we did in some areas we didn't that's been growing as as part of our development in the organization in, in the past year as well i can give you an example um just um this this last week in in uh, our lab in in one of our facilities there's a kata team and they've introduced uh, like six months ago a tiered huddle um, for both shifts and they they kind of take place during the day second shift starts kind of at late afternoon um so there's a crossover there where the kata teams work what they're trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, the experiments they're trying to do, the data they're trying to collect, et cetera, where they need participation from the, the technicians in the lab for, that now gets posted and talked about in the tier meeting um, to emphasize what the rest of the members of the team there need to do in order to support what Kara's trying to accomplish. So yes, there is a connection in some of those cases where, st where we're starting to see that that bond between the kind of teams working on something and it connects back to the daily activities of the, the team itself through their team meeting. Awesome, thank you. And that actually was our final question unless ha anybody else has another one. Um, but I also have, oh, we do have one. Um, how did the staff experience change? Were they more engaged? And how did you measure their learning growth and satisfaction? 
And how long did it take to notice culture change? So, right. So that 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 that's a pretty loaded question. We do surveys um, of of uh, engagement, but we do them on such a long cycle; it's kind of difficult to connect that to what we've been doing in the past year with Cara. But anecdotally, uh, what we do see is that the teams themselves are very engaged and are now running with it. They're proud of their accomplishments and they're keen to get on with what they need to get on with. Um, so there's definitely a level of satisfaction and engagement that is visible and discernible on a day-to-day -day basis and, and with interactions. Um, so that that's the one thing. So people are starting to have different conversations, I think also in the leadership teams because of that, that are starting to come out. Um, and then the third thing that is also noticeable is pe uh, people that are not involved in the CADA teams at the moment, they're starting to ask, well, when is it my turn? Um, what is going on here? Can we be part of this? This looks like a good thing, et cetera. So personally, the feedback I've had from folks on the shop floor has been positive. Um, that's the best best I can answer th this question at the moment. I don't know. There might be some uh, folks from our facilities on the call, so I invite them to, to to speak up at this point if they've got anything to to add to that. Awesome, thank you, Dirk. Um, I have time, and it looks like the chat and Q and A has kind of stopped for now. Um, but so just a quick reminder: twenty four to forty eight hours, you will receive a link to view the recording. It comes directly from me. And also you can see Dirk live in person at the TWI and Kata Summit coming up in April. Dirk, thank you so much for your webinar today. We will see you very, very soon. And to everybody who participated, thank you. And we will see you all again later. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you very much.